Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin through the lens of the stock market. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. We also do have the holiday sale on the premium list that is ending by the end of the year. So if you wanna sign up and lock in the lower rate, you can keep that rate as long as you do not cancel, as long as you sign up into the cryptoverse.com before the end of the year. Let's go ahead and jump in. So this is going to be potentially a somewhat convoluted video. And I, I don't mean for anyone to take this to the bank or anything like that, but I do think it does tell a, a bit of an interesting story. Okay, so the whole idea is, you know, on this channel and a lot of other channels, we typically measure Bitcoin with the US dollar right against the US dollar. However, there's a whole slew of other assets that we could be measuring it against. I think a lot of people, especially in the United States, just sort of think about the United the, the US dollar as the thing that everyone measures things against. But our friends in Europe are often often, you know, converting between one currency and another. Um, and so you know, I've, I've looked before at, at Bitcoin's valuation against other different other other currencies. Obviously, we could go look at, at Bitcoin Euro. That's obviously not going to be the focus of this video. But the focus of this video is going to be on the valuation against the stock market. OK, so what we want to do is we want to say, OK, well, this is Bitcoin. Right. We have the chart for Bitcoin right here. And one of the things that we have talked about in the past was measuring and measuring Bitcoin but as a function of M2 or dividing, taking Bitcoin's price and dividing it by M2 and M2 being the money supply, you know, generally speaking. OK, so this is the money supply. The whole idea was, why don't we take Bitcoin divided by M2 because of, of this deviation in the money supply that we saw starting in, 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 in 2020? All right. And what we came up with when we looked at this back in in the summer, we came up with this chart. And back then we said, look, a lot of people are waiting for Bitcoin to go down to to the prior all time high. OK, from uh, at 20K, a lot of people were waiting for this move right here. OK, um, and the, the general idea that the Bitcoin had to go back and test 20K or that it had to go back even further. And what we said back in July on the day, I believe that Bitcoin bounced, I think, in July 20th or around that date was when you account for the money supply, we've already tested the prior all time high. OK, when you account for the money supply, Bitcoin has already, in fact, tested the prior all time high. And so not that we necessarily had to take that to the bank and say that that had to be the low, but it does provide at least a different perspective than you may have otherwise had at the time. And so someone may have said, oh, well, you know, all these people are saying we have to go test the prior all time high. But in fact, incorporating the money supply, which has deviated from what it typically does, we've already tested it, right? So that's the argument. So then what if we account for Bitcoin's valuation, but through the lens of the stock market? Now, why would we do that? Well, if you look at the stock market, one of the things you notice is that it generally just goes up, okay? And we actually previously spoke about this sort of double peak uh, scenario that the stock market had, but even in that even in that scenario, you know the financial crisis over here, the dot com crash over here, even in this scenario, it's still for the stock market anyways fairly quickly recovered, and the time to recovery from here to a new all time high was actually less than the time it took from to go to this first peak to the second peak. Okay, so do keep that in mind. All right, so this was the stock market. This is the stock market over the last several decades, and. What my general thesis on the stock market, if you're on the premium list, then you'll already know this, is that you know generally buying the dip, as cliche as it sounds, does really tend to work out a lot. And you know some people choose to live their lives in constant fear that the stock market is going to have um, you know some ridiculous crash. And there's so many you know analysts on all sorts of news media, on all sorts of news outlet outlets that are saying smart things and pretending like they know that the stock market is going to crash tomorrow or next month or the next month. And what generally happens is the stock market trends up with time, right? Think about every analyst you've heard over the last couple of years, uh, especially since all this money printing started, basically saying, all right, we're, we're going to crash, we're going to crash, we're going to crash. And so the stock market just continues to go up. OK, so the thing is, 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 is most people like to sound smart, 
But the truth is, is, is no one knows what's going to happen. And, and actually in the stock market, you're just so much better off, historically speaking, and I would say going forward as well, just in my opinion, not financial advice, but just assuming that it trends up with time. Okay, so that's the stock market. Now, if you take the stock market divided by M2, this is what you get. And you're like, wait a second, what, what's going on here? If you look at the stock market, it generally trends up with time, okay? If you look at Bitcoin, it generally trends up with time as well, right? It, it, I mean, as you as you guys know, my, my thesis on Bitcoin is that it should generally trend up with time, and that is why I'm so invested in it, right? Because it, it generally trends up with time. The stock market generally trends up with time. But if you take Bitcoin divided by M2, you get this, where it still trends up with time. If you take the stock market divided by M2, you get an oscillator, right? I mean, it, it, it's just, it goes up and it goes down, it goes up and it goes down. And, and it's not really doing a whole lot, right? I mean, we're not even at valuations that we saw back in, in you know, 2000. In fact, in order for the stock market to reach those valuations when accounting for M2, which again, I know is a somewhat dubious way to do it, but again, we dubiously speculate here. Um, I know everyone, not everyone likes that, but not everyone has to be subscribed, right? So. In order for the stock market, when accounting for the money supply, to get up to previous valuations that we saw back in 2000, it would actually still need to go up 46%. And, and for a constant money supply, which we know we're not going to have, but if we did, then another 46% gain in the stock market would actually put us at, at around 700 here on, on the SPY. Okay, we're at 476 now, that would put us at around 700. Okay, I know we're, this is a very convoluted path that we're taking, but I promise you we're gonna, we're gonna bring it all, all around. Okay, so stock market generally trends up with time. Bitcoin generally trends up with time. We know that. Bitcoin divided by M2, or the stock market divided by M2 goes sideways. Bitcoin divided by M2 generally trends up with time. What can we learn if we take Bitcoin divided by the stock market? And what's interesting, you might wonder, why would we do that? Why do we care about that? Well, there's this thing called inflation, right? And you could make the argument that, not everyone's gonna believe it, right? But you could make the argument, in fact, that stocks are not necessarily uh, gaining value at the rate at which people think they are gaining. It's just that the valuation of the dollar is going down. Therefore, it takes more dollars to buy the same stock. Okay, does that make sense? So not to say that stocks are really going up as much as it seems, but if inflation is sky high, it's the same thing like if you wanna go buy a gallon of milk today versus buying a gallon of milk 30 years ago, it's a lot higher today. That doesn't mean that the, you know, the underlying value of the milk is, is, is more valuable today than it was 30 years ago. It's just that it costs more money to buy a gallon of it. The same idea could be said about the stock market. Maybe it's not that you know, necessarily everything is, is just worth so much more, it could be that part of that is just that it takes more dollars to buy the same thing because dollars are fundamentally worth less, okay? So that's the argument. Now, obviously, we can go into earnings and all that stuff in the stock market and how that has, has caused, um, or at least, you know, it makes sense in terms of the stock market going up, earnings have gone up, okay? So there's, there's some fundamental things we can talk about there. But regardless, I, I think I, I've done a good job so far of explaining it. Leave a note in the comments if I haven't, I'll try to um, clean it up maybe in a future video. So then we bring it back to the final question and well, what if you take Bitcoin divided by the stock market? What do you get? You get this, okay, this is what you get. Now, what I find interesting about this chart is that, and actually let me switch this over um, to, to one where we have a little bit more history on Bitcoin. So what I found interesting about this chart is that qualitatively, it looks the same as a Bitcoin chart, right? It doesn't really look any different. The only difference primarily is that quantitatively, obviously the numbers are different because you're dividing it by something. But the thing is, Bitcoin goes up, has gone up historically so much quicker than the stock market that, that what the stock market is doing is completely negligible to what Bitcoin's doing. I mean, just think about that for a second. Despite the fact that the stock market generally trends up with time, by a lot, right? I mean, this is a pretty, pretty nice move here by the stock market over the last year and a half. It still 
isn't even registered qualitatively on the Bitcoin chart. Okay, I think that's interesting. Now, surely there's more to it than that, right? It's just something I want to talk about here. So there's some talk here about well, what's Bitcoin gonna do. Okay, Bitcoin's at 47k. Uh, you know, is it is it gonna is it gonna bottom here at at 45k, which is where we've been we've, we've been testing it? Uh, do we have to go back down to the prior wick that took us down to 42k? I mean, certainly, like, I mean, all of these things are possibilities. We could go to 42K, we could go to 45K. Hell, we could go to 38K or 35K or 30K, right? We don't know, but I want to talk about something really quick, okay? So, one interesting thing is looking at this level here and seeing where we bottomed, okay? And noticing that today we're actually above that still. When looking at Bitcoin divided by the US dollar, we're actually still slightly above it. And I have seen some people say, well, you know, we need to go, we, we definitely need to go back and test 39K, um, you know, and, and, and put in maybe a, a double bottom or something, okay? Now look, again, anything is possible, right? Anything is possible. One of the things we have mentioned at least is that historically, anytime Bitcoin, Bitcoin held, this, held the line at the bull market support band, we haven't gone below those levels. It doesn't mean we can't break the 20 week moving average. Historically, once we do, we haven't gone below those levels. Not to say that we can't, right? I mean, there's gonna be a first time for everything, but that is at least an interesting area to watch. But if you look at Bitcoin divided by the stock market, we're actually testing those levels, right? We're actually testing the levels that we tested back in September already, okay? So some people are, are sitting here, you know, waiting for, you know, to say that, okay, we have to go back down to this level. And you could be right, right? I mean, I've certainly possible that we go back to 40K, certainly possible we go back to 42K. Anything is possible with, with, with investing in general. Again, all models are wrong. Some are useful. I have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. Bitcoin could go to 40K tomorrow. It could go to 55K tomorrow. I don't know. Okay. But what's interesting in this, in this analysis is that we're actually testing those levels that we were at back over here. And so you could argue that if you kind of believe this sort of narrative that when you, when you look at the stock market divided by M2, that it's, it basically just oscillates and it hasn't really done anything um, you know, since the 90s, or I mean, at least through the 90s, it's basically just been going more or less, I mean, obviously it goes up and it goes down, but we haven't been putting in new all-time highs, which might you might lead, be led to believe if you just looked at the stock market divided by the US dollar. Okay, so I think there's some interesting stuff there. But with all this money printing, right, and inflation, and the idea that maybe stocks aren't necessarily worth more because they're fundamentally worth more, but maybe the US dollar is worth less, could this be a measure of, of, of sort of some type of inflation um, and, and how we can maybe then relate it to Bitcoin and say, well, look, based on this, Bitcoin is testing where we were back in September. Uh, we're not quite to the, to the bottom of the wicks that we saw, okay? So in order to get back to that level, um, Bitcoin would actually have to drop another six or let's call it, let's call it 7% or so. So for a constant valuation of the stock market, which again, the stock market is not constant, and the argument is that it generally trends up with time, which it's doing yet again, and, and that anyone who bought the dip when it tested the 20-week moving average yet again, they're now in profits, okay? So this happens over and over again with the stock market. So the stock market is not constant, but if it were constant, how much further would Bitcoin have to fall to test the prior area that we tested back in September when accounting for the stock market? And interestingly, 7%, if Bitcoin were to drop 7% from the current value, where would that put it? I would put it at around 43K. Okay, so if Bitcoin were to go to 43K, then its valuation with respect to the stock market is actually the same that it was back during the September dip. Um, and you could argue we've already tested those levels because we... We already had a wick all the way down to less than 43K. Okay, so, you know, I, I think there's some interesting things to be to be learned about Bitcoin when we kind of like, you know, like expand our mind about what we value it against. Do we value it against the US dollar? And really, what is the argument for valuing it against the US dollar? If, if you know, the whole idea is like store value, obviously we value it against the US dollar because in life, most of the things that we buy uh, we're not actually doing the Bitcoin. We are still, in fact, using, um, you know, some type of fiat currency. Uh, that's just the way it is, right? That's just the truth. Okay, most of us, if you, you know, if you pay rent, if you go to the grocery store, 
uh, if you go to a restaurant, you know, you're, you're not typically taking paying with Bitcoin at this phase. It doesn't mean that you can't do it at some places. It's just that most people live their lives denominated in a way where they where they think back to the US dollar or they think back to the euro or something like that. But maybe we should expand our minds a little and and think about how Bitcoin could be valued when thinking about other assets and other asset classes. OK, I think it's interesting. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this in the comments. Um, reminder, we do also have a sale on the T-shirts. So if you want a T-shirt, get I don't know why you would want a T-shirt, but they're pretty comfortable. And if you don't own a T-shirt and you need a T-shirt, then go over to store.intothecryptoverse.com. And if you buy a T-shirt, I guess in the next 20, well, not even 24 hours, when I, by the end of the year, right? By the end of the year, if you buy a T-shirt by the end of the year, uh, and put in happy holidays, you'll get 20% off. So we have a lot of different shirts. Um, I really like these uh, these sweatshirts, they're pretty comfortable. But peruse if you want. We also do have the uh, the premium list into the cryptoverse.com. Lock in the lower rate, that'll also go through the end of the year. So running out of time on that. Uh, so if you're waiting for the time to do so, now would be a good time. Thank you guys for tuning in. Subscribe, click the bell icon to turn on notifications, give the video a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time. Bye.